Welcome to the Black Hole of Real Estate. We are back with episode 11. Florida is in phase two and continuing to open its doors and everybody getting out to reassimilate back into our Florida society. The weather is great, but I am wondering, vacation properties, condos in particular, are these in a bubble right now? And there's some concern about that uh, and the sales. And we're going to talk about that today. And uh, foreclosures. That's everybody's buzzword right now. We're going to spend some time going through what's going on in the foreclosure market and are there deals to be had in either one of these areas. This is Ron Wysikarski and I am here to welcome you back to the black hole of real estate. Um, vacation properties. Think of condos. Now, right now what we are finding is that the year-over-year -year sales of condos down dramatically. So if you look at the condo sold in May of 2019 and compare to May of 2020, down 48%. So just about in half. And for the first time, we actually saw the median sales price has gone down. Um, we have not seen median sales price go down in the year-over-year -year figures in quite some time. So this is the first one. Now, is this the tip of the iceberg or is it just a May COVID anomaly? Well, I'm not 100% sure on that. But to see the sales go down, we expected that, the number of condos sold. We did not expect to see the median sales price go down. Um, now, when we take a look at what happened in March of uh, 2020, so this year, we had 113 sales. We saw it go down to 87 in April. This is the Daytona Beach area, and it's 79 in, in, in May. So it's actually off just in the month over month. Another 9% down was almost 18% from March to April, another 9%. So we are off dramatically, about 30% in sales just over the last few months at a time when we would expect it to go up. Now, if there is a bit of a silver lining with an asterisk, that's going to be the piece about the median sales price because in April it was 168. In May it was 200. Now there was less sales, but the asterisk is this. Anytime that you're looking at a condo sales report, you have to think about the orientation of the condo. So what does that mean? It means that quite honestly, this month we may have seen more of the direct ocean front ones sell. Now, if they're direct ocean front, a buyer is going to pay a premium for that view to see nothing but the water. Now, the middle one is those with the side view. Where if you can have a balcony or you can see out a window and see a view of the ocean, you know, that for some people would be a nice view to have and a little less expensive than the direct ocean front. Now, there's other condos in the building that even though the building might be right on the ocean, they may have zero view. They may be looking at the street or a parking lot, but certainly not the ocean. And they'll sell for less. So depending on which type of units we're selling more that month, that's going to change that even more. Uh, we really don't have a statistic parsed that's going to say only oceanfront, only side view, and only street view on there. Because even within that... You've got a differentiation in buildings, amenities. Do they have a pool, indoors, outdoors, both, sauna, workout facility, stores, all those things. The real story is that the number of condos selling is down. And we wonder, you know, when is that going to turn around? If you look at the 2019 sales through the month of May and compare it to 2020, you see that the sales are down 15% across the board. That's a lot of condos not being sold. It's the difference between a little over 600 in 2019 being sold and just over 500 in 2020. So about 100 less condos. That's a big, big drop. If there's one, I don't know, quirky, interesting fact, the median sales price it, on those first five months of sales in both years it was 205. It was within 100 bucks either way. So the median sales price hasn't changed too, too much. But we did see the first drop off in May of 2020. So I have to wonder, are prices going to soften? And if they are, let me be honest with you, 2% is, it's two grand on 100. It's not the sort of drop that people are looking for. People are anticipating a big drop in prices. We hear it every day. We're called in, hey, I'm looking for a great deal, which always makes us laugh. And, and our tagline usually is, well, geez, you know, you're the first person today calling to look for a great deal. Quite honestly, I've got a bunch of calls for people looking for average deals. And, hey, we've even got some people, hey, can you give me the worst deal possible? Oh, oh, no, not really. Everybody wants a great deal. And everybody's looking for the same thing. They're chasing this elusive great deal. I'm not seeing any evidence that a $200,000 property is going to suddenly sell for hundred grand. 
across any type of property, including the foreclosures. Now, what I will say is that there's a little weakening in prices. That's good. But the counterbalance is the inventory. And right now, the inventory is off. And we don't really know where the replacement is coming from. So think of it this way. And I'm going to throw some numbers at you. And I hate to bore you with numbers, but I'm going to do it anyways because there's a story behind it. There's something called the absorption rate. And what does that mean to you? Well, back in January of 2019, so 18 months ago almost, there was a little over five um, months of inventory. And now we're sitting at less than five, about 4.8. So about a half month less of inventory. So in other words, the absorption rate just means if, if no more listings came on the market, how long would it take to run out of all the properties? And that's been running below five for the first time in a while. The list to sell ratio, that's just the price when you started out at the listing and what it sold at. It's holding firm and at 93, 94, it's been a real tight window for a year and a half. So that hasn't changed much. In the days on market, I mean, it was back in January 19, it's hovered in the same window at right around 115, 120 now for 18 straight months. So those things haven't changed. The inventory has been super low. And right now we, we've dipped below t uh, total properties available, just under 3,000. It was, it's been hovering just a little above 3,000 for 18 months. So what we're finding is this. And what does this mean to you as someone that's looking to buy or sell? If you're selling, it's taking about the same amount of time it has for the last 18 months. If you're pricing it well, then you're going to get about the same list to sell ratio. The absorption rate's a little bit off because the inventory is getting lower. So if there's some weakness in the market in anticipation of prices going down, this market continues to be different. And this leads to the foreclosure conversation. Interest rates are super low. They're, what are they, 3%, somewhere in that range. And there's not a lot of properties on the market. If you think about 2008, which everybody seems to think that we're going back to, and I'm going to tell you we're not. Here's why. In 08, interest rates were more than double what they are today. So money was way more expensive. And inventory was three to four times what it is today. So there was way more properties available. So it was more expensive and you know, way more to choose from. There was no urgency on the part of the buyers. They could wait and wait and wait. And eventually somebody would capitulate and sell for a price that the buyers were throwing out there. Entirely different right now. There's equity in the homes. There's no pressure of foreclosure to the masses. In 08, I mean, our market saw almost 70% of the properties selling each month, or at least on the market, were in foreclosure or in deed of lieu of foreclosure or a short sale. You know, now it's it's less than 5%. It's like 2 maybe 3%. It's a super small amount. So there's no pressure with regard to having all that inventory out there. And there's no pressure because interest rates are super low. Uh, the only pressure is that buyers are having a hard time finding what they want because there's so little inventory. So I think, and I know that it, there's, no, there's no impetus to make prices change because there's nothing forcing it to change. There's no economic event out there, even despite all this COVID stuff. Nothing has really changed as far as the pricing. It would take a long, long time for this cycle to work itself out, perhaps through downward pressure, uh, pricing through foreclosures or some, you know, something else. Because COVID didn't knock real estate on its side. It just paused it. We've talked about that for the last few months. It's going to be more like 9-11 people will pause and they'll slowly come back to the market. And right now, I mean, the buyers, I continue to say it, they act like COVID never happened. So here, here's where it takes us now. Buyers are fully willing to go out there and look at properties, and quite a few of them are vacant, so they can go out there and transact and buy and get great interest rates, and that's pretty normal for this time of year. But the sellers, they're still hesitant. Let's face it, it's a lot easier to walk in somebody else's house than to let people come into your house. You have some control over who comes into your house when you're listed, but anybody, you know, we don't know if they're sick. They might be concerned about it. They might be immunocompromised. Now, if they live out of area, that's kind of, okay, you just put a sign out there, it's vacant, no big deal. But if you're living in the house and you got to go in and out the property, at least Florida is opening up right now, but you still got to go someplace and somebody's looking at it. And you know, at least some of the restaurants are open right now and some of the coffee shops, things are, are opening up a little bit. That will help. Um, and as more sellers overcome you know, that fear, that concern, that inventory will come out there. But the buyers are grabbing it so quickly. I don't believe that we're going to be able to uh, see a whole lot more inventory, you know, come our way to the market anytime soon. Um, and that foreclosure market, well, let's just talk about that. Right now in our market, you would think that there's a ton of foreclosures, but if you think about it, there 
aren't a lot of foreclosures on the market right now. I mean, I, we checked the other day. It was like 30, 40 in the Daytona Beach market, so not a lot. And, you know, we have those foreclosure lists ready to go out to anybody who wants to look at them. But the, the impression would be that there's hundreds or thousands of properties that just flooded on the market with foreclosures because everybody's losing their home. Fact is that a lot of people have uh, the forbearances in place or maybe making their payments. You know, there's equity in the properties. A lot of people were paid through stimulus. So we're not finding that, you know, they talk about 10% of mortgages maybe being a, some sort of a foreclosure or forbearance. But I believe that most of those will come back into play. The banks have been greatly incented to make sure those don't go to foreclosure. But even if it did, you would probably have to miss three payments and then three more payments and then get a Liz pendants and have the bank come after you and threaten foreclosure and go to a judge. Not a lot of judges right now are kicking people out of their house. So this could take six months or so for those first new foreclosures from COVID to hit you know, the market, so to speak, except for they won't hit the market at that point. The bank still has to process the paperwork and get the property ready for the market, put it back on the market through an agent, and then you know, eventually have some showings, then have it close. So we may be nine or 12 months before we see any foreclosure sales from this you know, epidemic actually showing in, in, in the sold column, so to speak. And right now, the very few foreclosures we have in the market are highly sought after. Most of the foreclosures, when they go on the market, the banks are going to hold their price for the first 30 days. Rarely do we see them drop you know, 5% in the first 30 days. Quite often, what we're seeing is pent-up demand and everybody flocking into foreclosures in the first couple of days. And it's almost a routine that they're going to wait a few days, accept, you know, allow people to make offers. And then they'll hold them for a few days and it's like, okay, listen, we want your highest and best offer. And of course, when you do that, you don't know what the other person is offering or bidding, if you will. So if you offered 100 and somebody offered 90, you wouldn't know that. So if you offered the 100, you might have it, but you might be nervous and say, look, it, I'll up myself to 105. And the person at 90 might bail. So you might bid against yourself, so to speak, but you'll never know because the banks aren't going to tell you that. But believe me, it's a rare occurrence where there's not a second offer that's coming into the system. So you're always going to be flying a little bit blind. You just have to know what you want to offer and what you're willing to pay and when to stop. So what do we do now? Because the foreclosures are popular, they're going to be highly sought after. There's going to be multiple offers on most of them. And the banks don't have to sell. There's not that much. There's not a lot of pressure for them to do it. Quite honestly, there's properties on the market where the seller is a far greater motivation than the banks with the foreclosures. And there's some hidden gems out there. And this is where your agent can help you out. If you have an agent who understands the market and has been studying which properties have been out there for a while or perhaps what's undervalued, maybe somebody just needs cash quickly and they need a certain amount by a certain date. They might price it appropriately to get that property sold in record time and maybe have a close in a few days. And that's what the deals are probably going to be for the next six months, is how to find those hidden gems as they're coming on the market or maybe as they're about to come on the market and insert yourself in that buying process. So if you have cash, cash is king. That's gonna help you out get the best possible deal. If you're financing, you may miss out on some opportunities because these motivated sellers want the cash offers with the fewest contingencies. I assure you the bank is going to look at the cash offers if it's a foreclosure situation. So, you know, if you've got some dry powder on the sidelines and you've got cash you know, available to reallocate into real estate, maybe move it from the stock market or some other place. Great opportunity for you right now. If you're ready to go and can make a quick decision, this could be a great opportunity. But you're going to have to be stealth because at the moment, these super great deals that everybody's waiting for, if anything, people are bidding them up. They're, they're so anxious to get to them that they're not really um, materializing the way that we thought that they would. So we don't see that there's going to be downward pressure on price, even though the counter report was a little bit off. It's probably more likely to be an anomaly. And I expect to see those increases coming in the months ahead for the number of condos sold, as well as the median price to go back up. And a single family home was likely that that sector is likely to continue to move forward as well. I don't expect a lot of foreclosures to come on the market. So if you're waiting for the uh, bell to sound and everybody rushed to the foreclosures like the gold rush, I don't think it's happening. So that's what we have for you this week. Thanks for checking in out the black hole of real estate.
until next week.